An example of a BJT biasing circuit. Here we see two sources, the AC signal source and the DC bias source. But the exercise is about solving the circuit in DC. In DC, the capacitors operate as open circuits, removing the right-hand side of the circuit and the left-hand side of it as well, leaving exclusively this part. So this is the part of the circuit we will concern with in this solution. The first thing will be to replace uh, the transistor, this one, by its linear mode equivalent circuit, like so. We still identify the base, the emitter, and the collector. This is a beta 50 transistor for this exercise. Now we solve that circuit in assumed uh, linear mode. Let's see, the base current is a current in an RV branch. Voltage of the origin, 12 minus voltage of the destination, 0 volts, minus the opposing source, 0 0.7, divided by the resistance, 400 kilo ohms, and that base current is 28 microamps, which is more than 0. What does this signify? Is that the BJT is not in cutoff mode. At least we know that, because the current in the base is not negative. But that leaves one open question to answer. Is it in saturation or in linear mode? To answer that question, we will need VC, the voltage between the collector and the emitter. Because the emitter is at zero volts, it's connected to the reference node. All we need is VC. And VC is the voltage of this node, 12 volts, minus the voltage drop in this 2K ohm resistor, produced by this current, the current in the collector. Let's compute that current in the collector is 50 times IB. We know IB. That current is 1.4 milliamps. Now that current will produce this voltage drop in this 2 kilo ohm resistor and the voltage C, which is just the voltage of the collector, is 12 volts, minus that drop, it's 9.2 uh, volts, these volts, which, of course, is more than 0 0.2, and that has an implication. The implication is the transistor is in linear mode of operation, and this circuit really represents its behavior. The exercise does not end there. Let's compute now what is the power absorbed by this transistor. There is a little power absorbed here at the base emitter circuit, B emitter, which is IB times 0 0.7 volts. And there is some power also absorbed by the transistor at this CE port, which is IC multiplied by VCE. That is the power in the BJT base current times 0.7 volts plus 1.4 oh, milliamps times the voltage 9.2 oh, volts VC. A total is approximately 13 milliwatts. That is the power absorbed by this transistor. There is more. We want to find the load line for this circuit. Well, what is this? You say, well, what I did there is just keep what we had in the previous slide for reference. The load line is a line drawn in the plane of I in the collector versus the voltage collector emitter. That is a line that hits the horizontal axis at VCC, 12 volts, and the vertical axis at 12 divided by 2 kilos, 6 milliamps. On that line, we will identify the Q point, the point of operation of the transistor. But we already know what is the current of the transistor at the Q point. We computed that it's 1.4 milliamps. And we know what is the VCE of the transistor at the Q point. We also computed that before. That is 9.2 volts. We have to mind uh, the saturation a line at 0 0.2 volts and here we have VCEQ is 9.2 
is the VC and the Q point we computed and before and the current in the collector at that point is 1.4 milliamps which we will relabel as ICQ hmm that point is a little bit too close to the cutoff zone down here for comfort you see when we feed the signal into this amplifier the oscillations of the signal will shift the position of that uh, a dynamic point up and down along this load line and you see that it will hit the cutoff zone pretty easily we would like it better if Q was to move closer to the mid zone between 0 0.2 and 12 volts and that is what we want to happen how are we going to achieve that how can we move q to the mid zone mm, you say if only we had q here somewhere in the middle the current would be 3 milliamps instead of 1.4 would be right in the middle between 6 and 0 right right but for that current to be 3 milliamps around here the base current would have to be 3 milliamps divided by beta 50 uh, the base current would have to have been 60 microamps this current here but then we proceed backwards for that current to be 60 microamps because the voltage source continues to be the same we'll have to reduce this resistor to what value so we compute we say that resistance this one will have to be changed for a 12 volts minus 0 0.7 divided by 60 microamps 188 kilo ohms so if RB were 188 kilo ohms in that case then ICQ would be right here right in the middle right right here 3 milliamps and we will have an optimized Q point and that ends this exercise. Thank you very much.